Hello, look what came guys. It's my pocket Pemberley. Uh, she came yesterday. Um, I tried to film last night, but the lighting was really terrible. It was really dark, so I wanted to film again this morning to give you guys a, a clearer view of everything. Um, so yeah, I wanted to just compare this leather with some of the other leathers that I have um, as far as like floppiness, how it feels, how it scratches. I have a Mr. Darcy to show you, a cream and a Maverick. So right out of the gate by far this has been the uh, most pliable or floppiest leather um, even compared to my cream. My cream is now very similar to the floppiness of this just because I rolled it so much and I've been using it a lot. Um, but right from the start this is definitely feels very broken in and it's very bendy and, and soft. Um, so yeah, apparently the Pemberley is a Mr. Darcy with two different treatments. I'm not sure what those treatments are. If any of you know, I'd love to know. Um, but yeah, it definitely feels already broken in. I think Jennifer said that you, there's no need to roll it um, because it's already kind of been broken in that way. Um, I guess that's what the pebbles are from, from it being bent and flexed, I'm assuming. Um, so yeah, this is the original Mr. Darcy. It's a very much more slick leather. It scratches and scuffs and you could like see the, I don't know if it'll catch the light, you could like see the dents and, and the wear in it. Where this one doesn't seem to do that, like I could dig my nail in it and you're like, it might stay there for a second but then it kind of bends right out. Um, also, this one scratches um, a lot less than the Mr. Darcy. Like the Mr. Darcy, I can scratch there and you'll see the scratch and that'll kind of stay there for a little while until my normal use wears that away. And this one, okay, so it has a little scratch there but then it kind of just rubs out. Um, yeah, it fades away a lot sooner. So if I compare that to my cream, my cream is kind of similar to that, like if you scratch it, um, it rubs away, or if I condition it, it'll definitely go away. Um, I've conditioned this cream about three times, I think. I've had it a little less than a year. And feeling it, like this is where it's rolled or the pebbliest, I guess, on the cream, it feels very similar to the Pemberley, like the rolled textured part of the cream. Um, I would say the cream still feels a tad bit more porous and right out of the package the cream felt a little bit drier. This one already feels like it's been conditioned, the Pemberley. Um, but yeah, I would say that's the most similar. I don't have an Outlander to compare it to, um, but from just feeling it under your fingers, like the they feel very similar, like a rolled conditioned cream feels similar to this Pemberley. Now as far as floppiness is concerned, now this one is a deluxe, it, I mean, I think they only come in deluxe, it has pockets so it might be a little bit heavier, but it kind of flops like right open past 180 degrees very easily, even without the stuff in the pockets. And my Mr. Darcy, if I set it open, and I've used this quite a bit, I didn't roll this one, um, but the spine has been bent and stuff and it kind of will sit just at 180 degrees. It doesn't really go beyond that. Um, <laughs> my cat's <laughs> trying to play with the charm. And then this is the cream. This is a classic cream, but that one, yeah, does kind of the same. It's about the same pliability, I would say, a rolled cream as the Pemberley. And then if you want to see a Maverick, that really, that's about as far as the Maverick opens. And keep in mind, I stood on the spine back and forth, like I stood on it and jumped on it. And that's about as flexible as I'm getting the Maverick to be. Um, so yeah, definitely nowhere near, near as, as structured as the Maverick. Um, the classic Mr. Darcy feels definitely more structured. It has a little bit more stiffness to it. Um, the Pemberley already feels really squishy and bendy and pliable. 
Um, and the pockets themselves feel a lot more stretchy. Like these get a little bit stiff when everything's full. It's a little bit difficult to get, like I usually put cash back here. Um, if I have a little bit more and it's sometimes a little harder to slide it back there. But these pockets are like really stretchy. Now I don't have a sidekick, but like from watching the videos, it looks to be about as stretchy as the sidekick leather. Um, I don't think that it'll stretch out too much. It doesn't seem like it's, like I took the, the, put the cards in and then took them out and it kind of goes back to its original form. But it definitely is nicer to have an easier, easier access to this back slip pocket there. Um, so yeah, I don't know if there's any other comparison that you'd like to see from the different leathers or if there's a, um, an easier way for me to show you how, uh, how the leather is or how flexible it is. You can let me know and I'll, I'll be more than happy to try and help you. But otherwise I'll do a quick flip through of how I set this up. Um, it's very similar to my last setup video if you saw that. <laughs> I just changed the papers around and added a little bit more bling. Um, I made a charm here from some charms that I got at Michael's and I made some bookmarks because I've been enjoying the jingle. So if we go inside, um, in the front pockets I have same thing that I had before. I have some stamps. I keep my debit card in here. Um, I have my paper clip, my bow paper clip and then just a piece of journaling ephemera here. And in the back pocket, I have some cash and some post-its. Um, yeah, one thing that's just different is I decorated a little bit more than I normally do, uh, just because I've been enjoying playing with the different paper clips and uh, journaling packs and things like that. But the functionality of it is pretty much the same. The first elastic is my um, brain dump, where I just write random things that I need to know or doodle or whatever. Um, any random information goes in here, and if it's important, I've been tabbing it with a little semicolon tabs. Um, I have one of those skeleton clips with a quote here on the back. Um, I have a paper clip of just a piece of fabric here, just because I thought it looked pretty coming out the top. The second elastic has my Foxy Fix dashboard. I changed the paper in here, and I changed the post-its. I just have um, regular post-its. Uh, stuck here and then on the inside I change up the inside still have the same picture um, just change some journaling bits in here and then I have my monthly insert where again I keep my uh, keep track of when my bills are due and on the sidebar I have the income from my husband and myself <clears throat> then I have birthdays and anniversaries the next couple of pages are personal information like uh, my social security number um, couple of addresses um, and uh, just some reference information. Then I have uh, journal, um, sorry, travel information here. My wish list, my husband's wish list, video ideas, <coughs> excuse me, um, favorite shops for traveler's notebooks, long-term goals, and some projects that I wanted to do around my apartment. <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Um, then this is the back of the Foxy Fix dashboard. I have some washi tape that I just cut strips so that I can use it in my journal. I just layered it here. And then these are the semicolon tabs. I just stuck them on there. Um, so you just change the paper out just because I was, you know, wanting something different than I had. And this is just a piece of vellum that's around my main journal, um, my main planning part here. And yeah, so the, this is around my bullet journal and how I do my future planning, which is here, I'll show you. So I have the future log, like the traditional bullet journal, but I was finding that it, it, didn't, um, it didn't have enough room for like those silly tasks, like, I don't know, going food shopping on Monday or planning out those, you know, smaller things or, or go to the post office next Tuesday. When I didn't have the spread already written out. I didn't have a place to put that. So in the back here what I wound up doing was adding a weekly from DIY Fish and that's been helping tremendously with my future planning. I only have about a month in advance because um, that's all I really need to plan in advance and if I have something further then I've been adding it to the future log here. So 
this is open now to the month of August. So I have my to-do list for the month of August, like things I want to get done in August. Um, here is just basically a repetition of the monthly. I just usually rewrite which bills are due on which day. And then um, I get into the to the dailies or the weekly spread. So I have off normally on Mondays and Tuesdays, so I usually use a day per page there. And then from Wednesday to Sunday, um, I have on one page because I'm at work and I normally work longer hours. So I don't normally have more than a couple of things to write down and do. And then the way I do that is when something, I make always like little boxes. If it's done, I scribble it in. Um, if I'm working on it, I do half, um, the, fill in half a box. Uh, if I need to move it over to another day or to the next day, I put a little forward arrow. And if it's irrelevant or I don't need it anymore, I like put a line through it. And yeah, that's been working really well actually. I know it's really simple, but I think the simplicity of it is what keeps me um, coming back to it every day and keeping up with it all the time. Because if I want to, I could make a really big spread, and I have, and I've decorated a lot. But then if I'm like rushing or just need to write something down, I could do it really simple, and I don't need to decorate or do anything like that. So it's definitely adjustable to, to what you need. And then having this future planning um, has been a huge help. So I have, I copied little Ali, uh, Allie Brown's little manatee here for the cover for the September insert. Um, but as you can see, like what I was doing, um, I didn't have the day written out like for Tuesday the 30th. I didn't have that written out yet. So I just put down what I needed to do on that particular day. I needed to call this person because they were back in the office then. So I just wrote that down. And then when I do, when I write out the actual spread, I just add that in there. And that's been a huge help. And a really nice way to declutter everything that's in my head and yeah I feel like I have a place now for um, everything so that's from DIY fish again it's the field notes um, vertical weekly spread and then on the third elastic uh, I have my Midori zip pouch this is the passport size um, I just keep some washi for journaling or sticking things in where I need to and then here I have the photo from my lovely pen pal Jen. I found out she actually took this picture in the desert. Um, and just a journaling card there. And then in between the zip insert, I keep a folder. I just ha have some stickers in here. I had a paste stub that I needed to keep. But normally I just keep stickers. And then in the zip pouch, there is just some sticky tape for my journal, a paper clip, a rubber band if I need to add something in. And then the last book is my journal. And I just have some paper clips here that I made from some lace and then this one's from Michaels. Um, I was only journaling in this for a while, but I recently moved back into my narrow to journal. But if I have a really lazy day or something or don't want to pull out my narrow, I could also journal in here. And the way I archive them is like my, <clears throat> my narrow journal is, um, and this might seem really confusing, but to me it's it's been okay and making sense. So I have volume one, volume two, and then volume three for each additional book. If I have another book that I'm working on at the same time as the narrow insert, I um, label it like volume three C. So I actually finished two other field notes inserts. So this is now the third. So it's three C and it goes along with the time frame of this um, larger insert volume three. So yeah, I don't know if it makes sense for everybody, but um, hopefully that'll work and, you know, years down the road I can look back and make sense of what all my random books are from. Then the last uh, stuff I have in here is just in my secretarial pocket, and that is just receipts or coupons. Um, I have a prescription in here, some extra stickers, some market, ta uh, market dots, and... Yeah, that's about it. I'm using my two Coletto pens just for the colors. I might switch that out, but right now I like having the option for different colors. 
um, my charms I made from beads that I got at Michael's and jo uh, not Joann's, um, AC Moore. And I bought a few strands of beads, dumped it in this bowl here, and I've just been picking out whatever and putting it on. I have black uh, cotton or bead thread here just because everything is, the stitching and everything is black, but I also have brown that I use for my other notebooks. Um, if any of you have any other questions or would like to know anything else, please let me know. Or if you have any video ideas um, that you'd like to see, I would love to film them for you. Uh, yeah, so otherwise, I will see you all later. And thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye.